Hi there, Dave Rawlings here at the London Longsword Academy and now I'm going to have a look at the Siggy Arming Sword and Buckler. Now Siggy are turning out some very, very, very nice gear. I hear wonderful things about their feathers. And they very kindly sent me an arming sword and a buckler, which I haven't paid for and I want to make that clear before I do the review. I will still be very, very honest about how I feel about them. Now, first of all, the arming sword. Now, here, the arming sword is very, very nicely made. Good thick edge on it. A reasonable degree of flex. Now, I'm not particularly fond of people being wonderfully enamoured by great flex on a sword. I really feel we would do so much better actually learning control rather than worrying about this as a thing and recognising the option of withholding a thrust rather than actually going, oh, I've hit because it's really, really bent. Oh, the other person's much safer because my sword can really bend, but then there's other issues that go with that. So this is something I'd like to see sort of like slowly change. I rarely put how much I put sword flexes because I would rather see that control in place. That aside, the sword is very, very nicely made. Their leather work is pretty good and fairly basic, but has also slight embellishments to it, so something to be happy with. I don't like this particular pommel. That's a personal choice. I get a wheel pommel. There you go. Um, cross guard, good and sturdy, like this, this, and also very, very, very well anchored, so something to be pleased with there. Um, quite thin. I have one criticism of this, and this is again quite a personal thing. I feel this balances too much towards the cross, and as a result, it doesn't flow very well for me, and I dislike that in a sword, particularly for 133. I don't like that the sword feels like it doesn't have very, very much heft. So for me, this isn't an arming sword which I use very much because of that. Now, for competition, I can see why that might be a thing of benefit because it means there's less forwards momentum in the sword, there's less sort of like forward flick because we have that lack of roll. But if you're using control, I feel that it's actually eliminating some of the capacity for play. So I think it's a beautiful sword. I do not like the point of balance. I do not like how it handles particularly. Um, I'd like to see what it feels like with a round pommel, see if that makes any difference, see if it brings the balance a little bit forwards. But for me, this is not the one. For a competition sword, if you want something that doesn't have so much forward heft to it, it might be just the thing for you. Not perfect for me. So compare that to this sword, for example, which I'm using an awful lot for 133. Here, the balance is a fair way more forward. And simply, in order to allow us to do that, we just use more control. Now, obviously, I understand the argument of comp in competition. It's very, very hard to use that control. Maybe we need to take it back a little step in order to be able to facilitate um, more interesting use of weapons over being able to be more vigorous. So that's my main problem with this. I think it's a very, very nicely made sword. It's clearly a tournament sword. I think the balance is a little bit too far back, but the materials are very nice and good people to deal with. Now, this, however, is their buckler. And since I've got it, I have several different bucklers. I've had them made by Roy King, I've had the Night Shot bucklers, I've had various different things. I'm not sure I'd want to use this in a competition um, if I wanted it to stay intact. I don't think it's something that's going to stand up to a huge amount of battering. It is, however, the buckler that I use all the time now. These in the background generally stay here because this is an absolute delight to use. Um, good, comfortable ergonomic, comfortable grip. Anyone obsessed with 80s and 90s games understands the delight of ergonomics here. This is absolutely beautiful to play with. It's good, it's light, the leather working is on, 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 on it is nice. Um, I'm always a little bit wary that these aren't covered in, but there's been no sharp edges on this at all on the boss. Absolutely wonderful. I really, really, really like the Siggy Buckler. I don't think it's particularly cheap, but I think it's worth it. Again, if you're getting it, I probably want to, wouldn't want to use it for competition because I think it will deteriorate quickly and you're going to lose your big investment in what is an absolute delight to train with regularly. So for drilling and with club sparring, absolutely the Ziggy Buckler is my top, top choice at the moment. Arming sword, this is not for me. I would really, really like to try it with a wheel pommel and see whether that changes. But I think there are better options if you want to feel something that really allows you to feel the momentum of a good cutting tool. So that's something that I'd like to see them change, but if they're going to go more towards the competition market, I can understand why they've made the choices they've made. 
I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. Bye-bye.